Okay, before we continue on with the Shrine of Storms, I'm gonna level up a little bit, and as I promised, I'm going to level up the Faith to 20 so I can show off uh, what you get from that one girl over down that way. Yes, I seek its soul power, I'm going to touch the demon inside you, blah 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 blah. Um, more vitality. Okay, bye. <laughs> Just completely ignoring what she says. Anyways, now that we have 20 faith, I believe... Oh, Saint Urbane. She's going to keep... squeeing over Saint Urbane. Wait. My stats are right, right? Oh. Oh, Saint Urbane. Alright, we'll go take out the next boss, and then we'll go on ahead and, uh... see if she'll give us anything fancy. Maybe we have to leave the Nexus before she does her thing. I don't know. I don't know! It would be really nice, though, is if we could get some multiplayer. You know, blue phantoms in here. Help us out with this stuff. That would be nice. Because there are sometimes, uh... Blue eye stones on the ground in this area. Not very often, but I mean occasionally you'll see them. I did do this multiplayer with some friends of mine at one point. Yeah, I feel like if you want to see some of the more cool multiplayer aspects of this game, you should check out my Quaddy Plays Some Demon Souls series. Because I did like 15 videos of that, and there was a lot of multiplayer type stuff in there that was a lot of fun. This is... This is fun, you know, we're getting stuff done, but... It was a little bit more engaging. comes the Storm Ruler and all his little children. The Storm Ruler is the boss of 4-3, and, uh... The thing with this boss is each of the final bosses kind of has their own gimmick. The Dragon God had sort of the fact that he's more of a puzzle boss than an actual boss. Um, the old monk had that you have to get some multiplayer action in there in order to uh, fight the boss. This one... Um, this one involves using a particular item, which is this one right here, you pull it out of the ground, it's the Storm Ruler, and you use it, it's only, this effect that it has is only used in this area, but basically, um, instead of attacking like a normal sword would, this is what you do. You shoot a giant shockwave into the air, so yeah, basically... It hits high up, and then it goes pretty, pretty stinking far, too, so... Uh, that's the absolute best way to take these guys out, as you can see here. This is the best way to kill anything in this area. You can also use magic if you prefer, and uh, you have the option, you know, magic... Um, if you prefer to use, say, you know, bow and arrow something like that, you can use that, but this is pretty much the absolute best way to take the enemies out in this area, is using the Storm Ruler. And luckily, since we're on our first playthrough, these guys don't do that much damage with their attacks, but on New Game Plus, by this point, I would be pretty much dead if I got hit this many times. So it's nice that the game's a little bit lenient with us here. Anyways, is that... Where's the Storm Ruler himself? I know that once you start attacking his children, the Storm Ruler comes out and starts attacking you directly. But I have yet to see him. He's just kinda... I think he floats around high above you. I'm trying to find him. There he is. Yeah, I don't think we've pissed him off quite enough. But, uh... Once he notices what we're doing, he'll definitely be, uh, after us. So... 
I'm actually going to get to a nice little place of cover before that happens. So yeah. This is actually the strategy that I used when I fought this boss. Um, and probably the reason why I survived. Because this little destroyed house right here is actually an excellent way- oh, here he comes. It's an excellent, uh, excellent way to avoid his projectiles, which you saw some of right there. You didn't really see him directly, but... Basically, he shoots these... I, I can't even really describe them. I'm gonna have to show you guys what exactly they are. And that's gonna involve me dodging like a maniac, trying not to get killed by them by the same hand, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, for the moment, let's try and take out these remaining mana rays. I believe once you kill the Storm Ruler himself, uh, all these guys just kind of disappear in tow, but yeah. So here, I'll show these to you. That's what they look like. They're kind of like these big lances. I, I don't know the best way to describe them, but that's that's all I can think of is they look like lances. So yeah, to do damage, you just hit them the same way you would a normal um, storm, manta, whatever you want to call these. I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you call these? I could always look it up. I'll check it out after we beat the boss, or maybe I'll check it out now. I'm going to initiate a short pause so that I can look up what those things' names are. Ah, here we go. They're just called Storm Beasts, so it's a bit of a generic name, but... You know. It fits with the whole Storm beast -y theme type thingamajig. I don't know. Anyways, I'll show you the other way that you can do this. I don't have Soul Arrow equipped, so I can't use that strategy, but I'm going to try and use some arrows and see what we can do with that. Um, oh. Yeah, I should probably equip the arrows first. So we'll let him go through with this. I don't know if those poison you or anything, because that purplish fluid comes out. So that would kind of suggest it would do some damage in that respect. So yeah, if you want to fight the Storm Beast like that, it's a perfectly legitimate strategy to use. Um, it does do less damage than the Storm Ruler itself, but um, you, since you can hit him, you know, multiple times instead of just two or three at best, uh, it is a little bit better. And if you have to be out in the open and dodge these things, it's not impossible. It's a bit tough. Oh, yeah, it's a bit tough. I shouldn't have even bothered showing that off. <laughs> um, basically, you want to kind of roll in towards them, or run towards them, and kind of go under them, but I screwed up. I done goofed. That was dumb of me. Okay, I, I do want to show off how to dodge this, though, that's for sure. I guess that's the way to do it. Yeah, you just kind of run towards him, and hopefully the uh, the projectiles won't be able to catch up with you as you're running. So that that I guess is the way to do it. I, I don't think it's a 100% science as to how he shoots them and how you can dodge them, but uh, I don't know. I just wanted to show that off. If you want to uh, be out in the open, you don't want to take shelter in here. So my apologies for failing so badly there. So, all in all, it's not a tough boss, it's just it's just a matter of these things. You have to make sure that you don't get caught on the bad side of those, otherwise you're in very dire straits. Let's see if we can get one more, one more hit off. And maybe one more? Come on. There we go. So I guess three, four hits works too, in some cases. See, so yeah, that's the Storm King, and uh, that is it for the Shrine of Storms. And I will try and do the uh, Black World Tendency here as well. Anyways, yeah, we're just gonna run around. We're gonna grab some Cloud Stone. We're gonna we're gonna take care of business. Some lizards here. 
Surprisingly, this thing doesn't do that much damage, though. Yeah, this one's gonna go sailing off the cliff. Goodbye! Oh, and be careful when you're near a cliff and you're using this, because you do kind of lurch forward if you didn't notice. But yeah, in all of my past playthroughs, until I realized how the Storm Roller works in this area, I would always stay in this little shelter here, and that, that was very helpful. It was a pretty, pretty nice strategy. So yeah, we get some Pure Cloudstone, we get the Storm Demon Soul. I think that might be the only place to get Pure Cloudstone in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong, it may just be a really, really rare drop, kind of like uh, Pure Bladestone. Pure Bladestone is actually, I believe, the hardest ore to get in the game. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten it. It's it's very tough to come by, but, um, anyways. What the heck? Is that supposed to happen? I don't think that's supposed to happen. Ah! <laughs> What's going on? Oh my god. Um, I think I broke the game. Is this ever going to end? I don't think so. We gotta load our profile. Oh my god. I'm standing right on the edge. Oh god. Let's see if that happens again. Nope, there we go. That's what's supposed to happen. I don't know why we got that, uh... Whatever happened there. Okay, so I repaired all my weapons and armor because I haven't done that in a while. Now let's see what we can level up. Let's get vitality up to 20. And let's try to get luck. Oh, we don't have quite enough. Let's try to get luck up as much as we can. Actually, you know what? Um, I have some more souls on reserve here. The legendary. All that good stuff. Um, storied. Uh, storied. This. That. Alright, so I'll just use all these souls. Uh, I'm gonna level up as much as I can. Just use these things up, you know, get it over with. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Get that up there. And we can't level up again, actually. Just barely. We could almost level up, but not quite. Um, you know what? With these remaining souls, I'm running out of full moon grass. So I'm gonna go on ahead and buy some from Patches. I reckon they left behind some fine armor and weapons. Why not have a visit? See what you can find. Alrighty. Yeah, 17's not bad. What was he saying back there? I reckon they left. I don't know what he was saying. I kind of skipped through his text. Well, Sorry, guys. Um, I didn't think he had anything new to say, and I wasn't even actually going for the talk option, so I tried to skip through it. But in the dark. And you're still saying the same damn thing. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, we have a few new things available to us from Sage Frake. We have the homing soul arrow. Uh, we have the Fireball, which we're not going to get, because there's a better spell we can get with the Dragon's Demon Soul. Um, and we have Poison and Acid Cloud. Is there really anything else we can use these for? I don't think so. Well, possibly. I don't know. Well, I don't think we have the ones that we need anyways. But yeah, I might get the Homing Demon Soul, but I'm gonna just make sure... I'm gonna check what, uh... What Saint Urbane has to offer to us, so... Okay, I took all of my demon souls with me. I have all of our demon souls on hand now. Oh, she won't give us stuff now. Does it have to be above twenty? Maybe it's. It couldn't be thirty. Maybe it's twenty-one. You have further gifts to offer. Uh, let's see. We must defeat the demons, annul the curse of Boletaria, and purge the evil magicians who manipulate those accursed souls. Yep. Okay. 
do you have to teach us now? Oh, recovery. I actually don't even have recovery on my main file. Uh, you need three colorless demon souls, and since we're going to be collecting the uh, colorless demon souls from the primeval demons, I'll actually be able to get this. It's basically like heal plus. So like, instead of just doing, you know, your normal amount of healing, it gives you a good... I, I don't know exactly. It gives you a lot more health at the cost of more magic, but yeah. Really though, I mean, the original heal spell works just fine. Either way. Uh, and then we have Banish from the Old Monk's Soul. Banishes Black Phantoms near the caster. It's not very useful, honestly. Uh, the Black Phantom has to be near you, and if they hit you, they automatically interrupt the spell, and in general, you know, you'd probably be better off just fighting them rather than doing that. Generates a field around the user that prevents magic from being used. Now that could be useful. Um, I could show off the Morion Blade, but I don't know. I don't know which one I want to do in this case. Alright, before we continue, just one last thing. Um, the Yellow Demon Soul, basically, we have three things we can do with this. We can either make the, you know, uh, Black Phantom Banishing spell, which isn't very useful. We can make the Insanity Catalyst, or we can buy the Homing Soul Arrow. The Insanity Catalyst isn't a great magic weapon. Even though it is very powerful, it takes out nearly all of your magic, so we wouldn't really be able to cast anything with it, even if we did get it. So I'm going to go with the Homing Soul Arrow, um, and you'll see what that is. Oh, and one other thing. Um, I wasn't expecting to show this off, but yeah. Um, the Storm Rulers... Or not the storm rollers, the storm beasts. They actually come back, so if you want to get Cloudstone, this is the perfect place to grind it. Uh, granted, it's a little bit dangerous, but yeah, if, if that's what you're looking for, then those guys can offer it to you. I was actually just thinking regarding the uh, Storm King's Demon Soul. Um, the Morian Blade. It's not the most useful thing in the world, I'll say that much. Um, the thing about it is... I think what it is is that when you go below 30% health, um, it actually... It, it increases your attack power. I don't know if it's attack or defense. I'm pretty sure it would be attack considering, you know, it's a blade. But, more or less, you can stack that with the effect of, I think it's the Clever Rat's Ring. And, uh, in doing so, um, you'll actually... God, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about this. You'll actually have, like, 60% more effective attack power in battle. Or maybe, I, I don't know exactly what the, uh, percent would be. I don't know if anything would change that if you stack both of them on top of each other. But basically, if you're in peril, the blade will help you out a little bit there, so... That's the thing, if you're like a high risk player, if you want to always live with like below 30 HP, then that's kind of the way to go regarding the Morian Blade. Uh, still though, it's not a very good sword, so you probably want to keep it in a reserve slot, but um, that's the thing with that. So anyways, uh, right here, oops, center the camera, oh, he's already after us. <laughs> this is Satsuki, uh, Black Phantom Satsuki, he's, he's an interesting one. Um, he's actually after this blade, the Magical Sword Makoto, or something like that. I, I forget its exact name. I think it's something along those lines, though. But yeah, um... He's an interesting fellow. He does a lot of damage with his katana, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he does a crap load of damage with it, though, if you do end up getting hit. So you want to be careful with him. Oh! Yeah, yeah, that. You see right there. Um, that was probably a good indicator, if nothing else, that he uh, he means business. So, yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, the Morian Blade. I don't think it's going to suit my purposes very well because I'm not a very high risk player. So instead of using the Morian Blade, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I might just buy that spell that uh, Saint Urbane was selling. That might be a better idea for us to do. Alright. Let this be the time that I maybe don't fail so terribly against Setsuki. There we go. 
So he took care of the Silver Skeleton, that's good to do, because he can uh, come in at random times if you get a little bit too close. And while you're fighting Satsuki, who kills you in pretty much one shot, it's not good to have two very agile enemies to deal with at once, so yeah. And once I stun him with this this fire, uh, it, you can't really you can't really backstab him out of that hit stun animation. So I guess I just have to uh, exhaust my stamina on him. It's the best thing to do. He's not quite dead yet. It's very close though. He's gonna start. Well, usually he'll start trying to uh, eat some full moon grass and heal himself all the way, but. What you do is you don't give him a chance to do that, and he gives you the Hiltless, which I think we already had. Um, yeah, the Hiltless we actually found in 4.2, in that, that uh, cavern with all of the phosphorescent slugs. I think the idea is that uh, Setsuki maybe got eaten by phosphorescent slugs, and that's like his resting place. Anyways, this is what I was talking about when I was mentioning, uh, you know, black phantom enemies. Uh, you we won't be showing off too many of these, but this is just an example. Uh, basically, if you're at pure black world tendency, um, some black phantom enemies will appear that are just, you know, kind of retextured, stronger versions of um, existing enemies. So it varies, you know, what kind of enemies you may run into, but um, usually there's only one kind per area, or per, per stage of each world. This is stupid. Ah! And right over there, there is a ah, Black Phantom Gold Skeleton, which looks painful, so I'm going to run past them. Ah! And there's a uh, Black Phantom Skeleton Archer. I just ran through this whole level like a madman. Just a normal black skeleton. Let's jump down here like crazy people. Oh, I never picked that up. Yeah, I was actually I was looking at one of the earlier videos when I fought the Adjudicator and I saw that I never picked that up. Let's go on ahead and take care of that while we're here. It's a stone of ephemeral eyes. It's always good. Okay. Oh my god. No, I didn't want to be up here. Ah, die. Okay, that wasn't what I had in mind when I was jumping down here, but I'm glad I lived. Ah! I have this black skeleton. I'm gonna see if I can avoid him. Luckily, I was able to. And there is our primeval demon. Right before this, uh, this lizard, so let's kill it. What do you guys think the primeval demons look like? Because they look very strange. I can't quite place what I think they look like. It's almost like... Like some kind of plankton. That's what I think it looks like. It's like a giant living demon plankton from hell. I don't know. Alright, so let's return to the Nexus. And I'm hoping this is the correct way in which to uh, show off the world tendency stuff. So we went from pure black and hopefully we'll be going up to pure white. I think all that we have offered to us in the pure black world is um, just the Black Phantom, the named Black Phantom NPC, and the Primeval Demon, so I'm showing those off in each area. Um, the other thing is um, you get special weapons in the pure white world, so pretty much most of the worthwhile stuff is in the pure white world tendency areas, so if you can go to pure black world tendency and you do it on purpose, it's almost exclusively just to, uh, just to get the, um, the pure white effects, you know? It's like, kind of going all, all the way down and then rebounding all the way back up. It's sort of like that. It's more or less what the process would be, at least in, in my own words. Anyways. Oh, are we not, what? Hmm. That's pretty strange. Trying to, we're not up to uh, pure white yet. That's not good. 
Crap. Alright, yeah, so I'm, I'm where... I'm where we should, um... We should be getting the sword Makoto, but unfortunately it's not... It's not where we want it to be. Yeah, Satsuki isn't here, so I can only assume that, uh... We didn't quite get it all the way up to pure white. That's unfortunate. Ugh. Alright, um... Even though things went pretty much exactly according to plan, uh, we weren't able to get the special effects of the uh, Shrine of Storms. Which kind of sucks. Um, I apologize that I wasn't able to do that. Yeah, it appears as though um, the Magic Sword Makoto and Satsuki appearing are the only two effects, so... I guess we didn't miss much. I don't think I even have the Magic Sword Makoto on my own main file, so... I don't know, it's a bit of a bummer uh, we weren't able to get that, because I feel like we did everything the way we were supposed to. It's just... didn't quite work out for us, so... I don't know. All we have left now is the Valley of Defilement, and then we can finish off World 1, and we will be at Endgame, so... Yeah, we've showed off pretty much World 2, uh, World 3, and World 4 now. Well, except for some things in World 3 we still have to take care of. But, uh, I guess next up is just World 5, which we need to, uh, go take out, uh, Lord Ridiel in World 3, so. Anyways, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I'll see you all next time.